Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, we've got a, a special, special video we'll call it for you guys today. Now, our friends over at Tamiya USA were kind enough to get us out a copy of the new F14D Tomcat. And lately, I've been super busy doing other kinds of videos and working on things. And also, the IPMS Nationals are going on right now. So I'm going to have my dear friend Mike Reeves from Phase Hanger Resins. He has agreed to come in and build the kit. Uh, we'll have some pictures and some video, and then just a really, really nice build of this upcoming piece. So uh, I know you were almost t at the point, you're not even a big Tomcat fan per se. <laughs> no. But the A fascinated you so much that you were just super excited. He said, definitely, I want to build that for you. So Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I've... Well, to me, it's brand new uh, way of tooling things since, like, the KI-61, the ME-109, things like that. You know, you even look back at the 30-second scale Corsair, Mustang, Spitfire. Um, when I opened the box for the A model, which is just an absolute gorgeous model, I knew I wouldn't be disappointed with the F-14D. And, uh, frankly, I really love the Bounty Hunters, and I know that uh, they flew the F-14D, so uh, having the markings in the kit kind of excited me too so that's the way we're going to go on this thing and uh, it's going to be 100 percent out of the box and and uh, you know any little things that i might run across um, i'm certainly uh, happy to point those out but uh, just just excited overall to build this uh, this wonderfully engineered uh, model and just real quick too uh, i was mentioning phase hanger resin mike is uh, owns phase hanger resins and he makes all kinds of resin aftermarket parts for airplanes so i don't know if there's anything coming out for this but uh Definitely go on to, why don't you give them your website, uh, and we'll post it down below down here as well. Sure, it's uh, just www.phasehangerresin, and that's P-H-A-S-E-H-A-N-G-A-R-R-E-S-I-N.com. Um, love to help anybody out uh, with uh, their resin needs. Uh, don't have anything in the, in the market yet for this, but that doesn't mean there isn't stuff coming. Um, I've got a team of people that help me out uh, with uh, with some masters and things, so whatever they come to, m whatever comes to their mind, and, and it's uh, part of their kind of repertoire, I'm always happy to consider it. So, um, but yeah, I'd certainly appreciate the support, and I look forward to doing this build for you. Excellent. So uh, enough talking. So let's get started. Hi everybody, my name is Mike Reeves. Um, as you can see here, we have the brand new upcoming release of the Tamiya F14D Tomcat. Um, Andy was kind enough to let me build the kit for him as he's got a lot going on right now and um, frankly, I pretty much begged him to do it. Um, so what we'll do here is a, is a quick, uh, fun, out of the box, 100% out of the box build. I'll show you some of the things that I'll do to, to hopefully improve the assembly sequence and things like that. But overall, I'm looking forward to getting started. Okay, so I have started working on getting the cockpit started here. Um, this is one of the things that everybody usually starts first in a plastic model airplane. As you can see, the Tamiya kit has a lot of parts. This isn't even including the seats or some of the things up close up on the um, control panels. So what I'm going to do is get everything painted up and uh, get everything assembled and then show you the finished result. Right now everything about this kit is amazing. It is probably easily one of the best model kits I've ever seen out of the box. absolutely adore about this kit is the fact that you can basically build it as two kits. You have the rear fuselage, basically everything from the from the forward fuselage back. You can build almost all on its own and you can even add the forward fuselage later on. 
which is precisely what I'm going to do. That gives me working room so I don't have this huge bulky model on the bench while well, maybe I have to fare in some parts on the intakes and things like that. Now, speaking of intakes, here's basically what uh, you're going to require to to finish these. Um, we've got the intake insert tubes, which I've gone ahead and smoothed out with the Tamiya putty and the uh, Tamiya lacquer thinner like I told you about. We've got the fan sections right here which I've painted black. They'll be painted uh, a nice uh, all-clad color here tonight as well and inserted into those intakes after they're painted. These are the main trunks that will go along the bottom of the fuselage. And these beautiful little things here with these nice delicate little um, arms in there are the lower fuselage uh, bypass doors and things like that. So, with all that said, I've got a lot of white to paint. Um, a whole lot which is I'm going what I'm going to do right now and then uh, essentially once everything's painted and ready to go I'll assemble all of it which I will show you um, kind of at least one intake completely you know on its own how it goes together and how to put it in and then uh, also I will be installing on the upper fuselage you can see sorry about my hand there's a whole section of the rear fuselage missing where the boat tail is. That's this piece. So what I'm going to do, just for ease of fit, because it is a little tedious, you got to get it under those strakes, is I'm going to kind of tape the upper and lower fuselages together, put this on, and then glue it to the fuselage so I can blend it as it goes. Uh, but that will be another step here soon. Um, but doing some test fitting it uh, it fits like a glove really I mean there there hasn't been any major surprise uh, one thing I have noticed is Tamiya has been very smart about where they place their ejection pin marks there hasn't been one in a gear bay on a gear door inside the intakes you usually will find them you know a couple on the inside of the tubes uh, that you have to fill and even sometimes up in here on the uh, on the main intakes uh, like in Hasegawa and things like that. Not that issue on this kit. I've yet to have to fill a, an ejector pin mark. Self is uh, just a testament to, to the company that puts these models out. Um, everything that they have been doing has just been getting better. Some of you may remember I built the KI-61 uh, for Andy and I thought that was a marvel and, and I that's not even in my realm. I do jets as a rule and uh you know i know the new 109 kit that g uh g6 i believe um is also a uh a model to behold so you know some people complain about model prices and i certainly understand that but when you look at the engineering and the kits that tamiya puts out and i'm not just being a tamiya fan fanboy here um you really do get your money's worth out of it because half the enjoyment for me is getting the model ready to put paint and decals on. It is not having to fill, you know, ejector pin marks or, you know, rub down plastic that has pits in it, rescribe where scribing is really weak. I'd like to be able to just, I don't want to say box shake because I also make resin aftermarket stuff. So I do like to, to have fun uh, doing that kind of stuff as well. But once in a while, I like to have a kit that is just for fun. And that's exactly what this kit has been from the moment I've started on it. And uh, I'm sure, barring any major screw up on my part, which can happen, um, Lord knows, but my, uh, my trash can has been filled full of models at one point in time or another that I have screwed up. Uh, but hopefully not on this guy. Um, I'm really hoping to get it done for Andy in a really nice way. And uh, for those of you going to the IPMS Nationals here in Phoenix, uh, I know Andy will have a table I believe at least one day, I think on Saturday the uh, 3rd. Um, I, I'm going to have him uh, have this on display for those of you that will be at the show and want to see what this kit looks like put together. I'm not sure that Tamiya will actually have one of their own there. Um, rumor is they're not coming. So anyhow, without further ado, i got to break out the old, uh, the old airbrush. The trusty old Iwata and uh, throw some white paint down uh, and then 
we'll focus back on getting this cockpit on track and uh, starting getting this thing coming together. In the meantime, look for other tedious things to be done. Landing gear will be assembled, the weapons I will do an uh, assembly on, and uh, you know I'll show you the major parts and, and how they go together as we go. Um, I certainly hope you're enjoying this video. It's I'm a rookie at this, so forgive me if I if I do sound a little repetitious and even a little bit uh, nervous. Um, it's my it's my second attempt at this, and uh, I just want you guys to see how how this kit goes together. And naturally, on on Andy's uh, video, if you have questions or things, he can post them to me, and I can answer what I can. Anyhow, let's throw down some white paint. Today will be major assembly, getting all of this uh, together, and uh, then I can start focusing back on the front end. Um, I've got the, the intakes painted uh, white, uh, did a semi-gloss white. I got the, uh, the intake fans painted, I just need to do a wash and some highlights in there. The exhausts are uh, starting with their white base coat. Um, that will all get changed and, and uh, weathered and things like that. And then we have the uh, the main intakes painted, and I, I was a liar. There are two ejector to pin marks that I noticed after I got paint on these. and um, But I'm leaving them because you can't see it the way that how low the airplane sits. And uh, you need some sort of special mirror to get in there to see that. So next up now is uh, getting the fuselage together. You can see I've added these ramp sections here that we uh, discussed in the last um, installment. All the gear uh, bays are painted white, semi-gloss. Uh, to me, it calls for XF1 uh, flat white. And all the years of working on and being around airplanes, I've never seen a flat white gear bay. Um, everything's always had a semi-gloss sheen to it. So, And for me, it's also easy to weather that way because the wash and things like that will, will flow a lot better. And these things fit like a dream. You just got to make sure that uh, you have them on the right hand, the right sides. So, in fact, they're keyed so they wouldn't fit the other, on the wrong side. Um, and with that, I mean, it's pretty simple. The one thing I love about this is to me it makes you, they give you the opportunity. They're not glued together. But you can slide the wings on. Oops. You can slide the wings on later after everything's assembled, uh, which makes painting a much easier process as well. I'm going to go ahead and put all these parts together. Just about to go to my favorite part of this entire project on this Tamiya F-14D, and that's the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'll do a, a base coat of the light ghost gray, kind of all over the whole thing, and then I'll come back in and I'll blend the dark ghost gray because it's really not a hard edge, um, even though it looks like that in the instructions. It's a little bit feathered, and then uh, we'll work on weathering. Another thing I do with every model I build is before I paint, I do kind of rub it down with a tack cloth with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to kind of get any dust and hair or you know lint, whatever might show up. Uh, those of you that have pets can certainly understand that you know you get things on your on your models from just your your animals running around your house and stuff gets up in the air. So after we're done with paint. I'm going to go ahead and work on uh, working on the clear parts and then uh, obviously working on uh, all the white stuff underneath, the landing gear, the, the gear doors and that stuff as well as getting the weapons and things like that all lined up on this kit. So, Simply put down the base colors, uh, so I have the, the light ghost gray and the dark ghost gray and then I took a spray bottle, just a standard old Walmart type spray bottle with water in it sprayed the model down with it uh, and got it kind of pretty wet and then I came over with kosher salt of all things and just sprinkled it on randomly all over the model um, and then uh, after it dried I let it dry for 24 hours I came in with darker and lighter shades of the base color and just basically sprayed over the top of the salt let that dry for another you know eight or ten hours you know in this case I'm using uh, Tamiya and Gunzi and Mr. Paint paints and so they're all kind of that acrylic lacquer base so they dry a lot quicker having that little bit of lacquer to them. Um, then I just took a, a, a soft bristled wide brush and brushed the salt off and uh, I did have to wash it off in a couple spots because it did stick pretty well um, but uh, once I did that 
I could come back with some more of that base color or some more of the you know the darker or lighter color versions of the base color and just kind of fill in so it didn't look heavy in too many spots but it gave you that random look um, I really recommend it it was a lot of fun to try and certainly mine's not perfect by any stretch but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to experimenting more with it because I think you get a really cool kind of I've been out at sea look on these things Getting ready to just finish assembly on this beautiful model. Um, the paint is done, or at least as done as it's going to get for a while. And uh, we're getting ready for decals. So in this case, it's a gloss coat time, right? And everybody has their own techniques for gloss coat. For me, because I use Tamiya and this Mr. Paint paint, which is basically a... Um, lacquer based acrylic which is I know weird I decided that I was gonna go with kind of the same thing over the top of the paint now you're gonna think I'm crazy because I'm gonna do something a little bit weird so what I do is I use Tamiya clear x22 clear and mix it with with Tamiya lacquer thinner really thin and I start off with kind of a little bit of a mist coat and then I go into a heavy coat and it really just kind of brings it all up and brings it together the problem is and many of you have probably experienced this if you're using an airbrush the airbrush you're not getting as much of a of coverage if you will uh, that you want so Sometimes you get kind of those flat spots that even though you're spraying them with the clear When you go back and look at it, you get a flat spot and you know that eventually a decal is going to go on that spot And it's just not going to It's not going to work. You're going to get silvering or it's just not going to stick, whatever So my trick that I like to use when I use this particular formula and this is only mine um well, I shouldn't say it's only mine, but this is something I, I've learned. Is after my Tamiya X22 and my lacquer thinner have dried, what I do use is Gunzi Leveling Thinner. Okay? I literally take that in my airbrush. I pour it straight in, just like that. I pour it straight in. And I do a nice heavy coat over the entire model. What I seem to find that what it does is it takes those flat spots and it levels them out. So you have a smooth coat over the entire model. And as you can see, I know it's hard to tell on this camera, um, it's pretty glossy. It's great for decals. We're ready to go. And it's also great for weathering. And the other cool thing is that that lacquer thinner dries so fast that it's almost it's this is five minutes ago and and I can I can rub on the model and nothing happens so the next step here with this kit is using the Tamiya decals um, to go down onto the model I'm gonna go straight out of the box you can see I've got the seats are not installed, they're not even painted, but I just kind of want to see how they fit along with the, the windscreen and the, and the two uh, combing sections. So at this point, my next step is putting decals on, which we're going to use, like I said, the kit decals, which actually the sheet is beautifully printed. And I've already used some of the decals in the cockpit on some of the instrument panels and things like that. I hope you can see. Uh, they lay down great. They conform well. And we're also going to 
do all of it with the uh, Tamiya Mark Fit because Tamiya kit might as well use Tamiya stuff whenever we can. Because these guys are the, the kind of the king of the hill. However, sometimes we do run into issues that, that their products don't work specific, specifically for something. Um, that said, we will adapt and overcome, but uh, we're on the final stretch. We got missiles painted. Missiles are painted. Landing gear is, well, not really, a, well, it's assembled, but it's not weathered or anything, but it's coming up. So before you know it, this thing's gonna be done. The model's painted, it's weathered, and uh, the final assembly is upon us. I uh, got the pylons assembled with the, uh, the AIM-9s and the AIM-7s are uh, on here. The pylons went together seamlessly. Uh, there's two halves to each. So this will be two pieces, this section here. This is also two pieces. You then assemble them together, and then you add the sidewinder rail right here the the missiles themselves go together pretty flawlessly um to me i think i said in the last uh video that on the uh a nines they break the mo the missile body kind of right along here so that you can exchange uh the head of the missile for different variants pretty ingenious um I had to kind of adjust the fit on mine a little bit, probably my own fault, little ham fist, but overall went together really well. I've also got the windscreen permanently attached. That went on really, really well. Left a little bit of a seam break here just to kind of show that it, it is actually the way it is on the airplane, but blended it in quite a bit with the uh, Vallejo putty. Uh, just smeared it on, used a wet uh, Q-tip, and just beaded it right off uh, and it smoothed right down. The paint itself on the model is a combination of Gunsy uh, H307 Dark Ghost Gray and I used Mr. Paint uh, FS 36375 Light Ghost Gray on the, on the uh, sides and the bottom. Everything on here has gone together pretty easily. You're not gonna find much more of a straightforward kit even when you open the box the parts count looks a bit daunting, uh, but it really isn't bad at all. Tamiya is really good about getting the assembly instructions and the assembly sequence uh, to make it as easy as possible on the modeler, um, which I'm sure we can all appreciate. I did the salt technique. Uh, basically wet the model down in a little spray bottle of water, took some uh, um, just kosher salt, sprinkled it on, on and just all over and then took uh, slightly darker versions of the base color uh, for each color and just mist it over. Once I brushed it off, if it looked a little heavy in spots, it was pretty simple to just go back and kind of blend it in. But as you can see, it kind of gives that Navy model kind of, you know, beat up feel without being too overpowering. I'll probably go back and, and tone a little bit down and maybe mess with some of the panels, but I'm over, overall really happy. I've been asked about Tamiya decals. Um, the decals on this kit are straight out of the kit, uh, not a single thing from another uh, model. They went on really, really well. I did find that the larger decals, such as the tail and up here on the on the nose, were a little bit uh, easy to break. They were brittle. Uh, that said, they still went down flawlessly using, uh, I used the Tamiya Mark Fit, uh, which I've actually come to really like even more than the old Micro Soul and Micro Set. Uh, it just seems to go on really nice, and it's really blending the decals down. I'll be able to... Oops. Well, 
Well, we'll leave the wheel on. I won't worry about that. I'll be able to just pull the wings off, fold them back. Uh, just easier to transport. I can fit it in a smaller box. You know, once the clear coat's on, just lay the wings on top and then or, or on the side, and then we'll be good to go as far as transporting. And uh, they go on, I mean, just as easy as they come off. And it also really helped for assembly and painting because I didn't have to worry about... I could paint the, the wings and essentially assemble them separately. What I do for my wash is, because now it's pretty durable, uh, I take actual oil colors, Windsor & Newton ones here. Um, you, you can get the top of the line. I just get the, the cheapies. I think these are like six bucks a, a tube. And uh, I thin, thin them uh, really, really well with uh, odorless turpenoid. And then just brush it on the model, let it dry for a little while. Um, it might freak you out because when you look at it, it's going to be a mess. And then I just take a, a clean white t-shirt um, or a piece of cotton cloth and just wipe it back the direction of the airflow on the model um, to kind of get that streaking. And it really, what I liked, it not only brings out the, the panel lines, but it also brings out some of that salt technique, kind of pulls it out a little bit and adds a little bit of staining to the paint too, which gives it that kind of overall three-dimensional feel and uh, doesn't look like a, you know, a toy. Well, here we are. Here is our completed model. And we're first gonna give, of course, give you a 360 view, top and bottom and all the sides, showing you how beautiful this model kit came out. I think Mike did an absolute stunning job on this, this beautiful, beautiful kit. So tell me, Mike, how did you enjoy the model kit? Honestly, it was, and I can't even make this up, one of the most fun builds I've ever done, uh, ever. And uh, the uh, the fit, the whole, the fidelity of detail, all of it on this kit is just absolutely amazing. And, and you're getting all this wonderful new Tamiya engineering. Um, now, some of the mistakes on the airplane and some of the mistakes on the build, I can fully admit are my own. But uh, overall, I, I haven't had more fun building a model than, than this one uh, in a long, long time. So... Uh, you know, if, if you're after this kit, or you want, or you're a to me, or a, just an F-14 fan in general, this kit and even the A model are, are the ones to get right now. Just a phenomenal build. Uh, it's broken down to the point where everything almost lines up on a panel line when you put it together. And uh, you know, I used very little filler, and the filler I did use, again, probably my own doing. Um, but yeah, I don't think you would find a better engineered model in the world right now than this particular model. How realistic, I mean, you know, sometimes guys are always saying, oh, something's over-weathered or under-weathered, and in your opinion, it, how realistic, you know, within reason is something like that? Would the plane get that kind of, uh, that rough texture to it? Oh, yeah. Um, I've seen some really beat up, you know, Navy airplanes in general. Um, that salt spray, I guess, is yeah, really doing a job on it. Absolutely, and con corrosion control comes out there with spray cans of, whatever color gray they have uh, and, and patch things up uh, after they sand things down a little bit. But, uh, you know, in this case, this is also a, a CAG jet, so it's the, the boss's airplane. I was terrified that I overdid it, so I actually came back and, and really kind of toned it down quite a bit. I tried to keep the really big weathering areas, the, the darker kind of splotchy areas, where you would see like the most foot traffic, maybe the most maintenance, and a lot of the oil and grime uh, would leak out of, like out of the, the you know the uh, flaps and back by the air brake over here by some of the scoops and things like that so um, it was it was just really fun to experiment with and I know I've got a long way to go uh, but uh, you know for me it's all about learning techniques and having fun and uh, this was certainly one of those things I can't wait to practice again so I want to thank Mike Reeves from Fangs Hangar Resins. I want to really appreciate and what a fabulous job he did on this build. And uh, I want to thank you guys as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.